Hey guys, and welcome back to another something in about five minutes. Today we're talking about a skill that rarely is performed. I think a lot of people don't even realize that this is a thing that they should be doing when talking all about inferior MIs or inferior myocardial infarctions. And that is the right-sided 12 lead. So let's get started. So guys, when we're talking all about the right-sided 12 lead, we're talking specifically in terms of we see a inferior myocardial infarction on a 12 lead. So someone calls for chest pain or other symptoms associated with a myocardial infarction. We run a 12 lead and now we find out that there's ST elevations in leads two, three, and AVF, which is considered an inferior myocardial infarction. But now what we should be doing is once we get them to a point where they're somewhat stabilized, we need to start looking at the right side of the heart as well. Specifically in these, because we're going to be giving nitrates to treat the angina and the chest pain for that vasodilation to help oxygenate the heart. So we don't want to be giving nitrates if the right side of the heart is now involved. With inferior MIs, we're already decreasing the workflow of the left ventricle. Our ejection fraction typically goes down. But now what we're now going to be doing is if there's right side involvement with the right ventricle, we are going to tank the preload on the heart. So now we're going to have severely hypotensive patients with very sick hearts. So we don't want to be doing that. And this is why a 12 lead on the right side is so important. So there's a little stuff, there's some stuff that we need to review here, okay? And the first thing that we're going to review is the right coronary artery is the blood supply to a lot of things, okay? The right coronary artery supplies blood flow to the right ventricle, the right atrium, the SA node or the sinoatrium or the pacemaker of the heart, the AV node, the atrioventricular node, which is the secondary pacemaker to the heart. Remember that the inferior wall and the posterior wall. So typically, if the right coronary artery gets blocked at some point, we are going to have an inferior wall STEMI, correct? If we already have a blockage for the inferior wall, we're typically going to get some sort of involvement on that right ventricular side. So, um, a patient with an inferior STEMI, okay, the right ventricular infarct okay that's what we're talking about it is, it is suggested when we see on a standard 12 lead st elevation in v1 the precordial lead v1 okay so we should be going hey we see elevations in v1 on a standard that is our thing to say hey we need to be doing a right-sided 12 lead okay if we see uh, st elevation in v1 with ST depression in V2, then we should be going, hey, there's probably right ventricular involvement. And the last thing is if we see a higher elevation, ST segment elevation in leads three, then we do lead two, okay? All those are uh, signs in our 12 lead that we should be thinking there's right ventricular infarct as well. And these are the clues to get you to do a right-sided 12 lead okay so when we're talking ways to do it there's three distinct ways to do it you could take all of your precordial leads and move them to the right hand side i tend to do that um, when i am doing a right-sided 12 lead you could just move v3 through v6 to the right side and leave v1 and v2 in place okay now when i say uh, leave V1 and V2 in place, you're literally going to leave V1 and V2 in place and just take three, and three, four, five, and six and move them to the right side. When I do a complete set, I leave V1 and V2 stickers in place, I just switch the wires, okay? So V1 starts on the left side instead of the right, okay? Or if you really want to just look at a quick way of doing a right side 12 lead you can look at v4 and just move v4 to the right side okay now here's what those are going to start looking like okay so when i do it 
we I typically do this method, the full move all of the precordial leads to the right side. So I switch one and two, and then I place three, four, five, and six as such, okay? If you're going to just leave V1 and V2 in place, you can remember not switch the leads, but then take three, four, five, and six, and just place them like this diagram shows, okay? The last way you could do it is like I said, you could just take uh, V4 and move V4 over. We tend to look at V4 specifically because when we have uh, right V4, we are looking at a, uh, a sensitivity rate of 88% and a diagnostic rate of 78% success in diagnosing an ST elevation to the right ventricle. So this is kind of why we really start to look at, uh, at V4. So showing you guys all this, I just want to reiterate the fact of you should be doing right side 12 leads when you see a inferior infarct on your standard 12 lead. Don't forget if you do a right side 12 lead, make sure that you label it right sided or, or RV1 or something so you are knowing when you're looking at your printouts, this one's right, this one's standard. Okay, something to clue you into what you're showing the doctors when you get there. You don't necessarily want to tank their preload in these inferior settings if they have the right side involvement. So uh, again, if you're feeling like there's right side involvement with the inferior STEMI, the last thing that you could do if you really feel that the nitrates are going to be working is going, uh, going along with your protocol or calling medical direction and sending them both 12 leads and saying, hey, this is what I'm seeing involvement in both sides. Do you want me to proceed with the nitrates? Guys, that's it for today. I want to thank you for continuing to watch this, uh, this weekly series. It's awesome, and uh, your guys' feedback on it has been stellar. Thank you again, and stay safe.